Hi there. Now I've finished working on Lionel at Lodge. That's now finished and it's in my window alongside my child at Doll's house. So I've had a few children in the village come along and have a look, which is lovely to see. So both of them are side by side. I managed to fit both of them in one window, actually, which is ideal. So now that's all finished, I thought I'd dust off Sunnyview Villa. This was the third doll's house I acquired. It was being given away free by somebody in the village. Initially, I thought I wouldn't have it because it was really quite poor condition. And I don't tend to jump on doll's housey type stuff that's being given away free because usually the kids want them first. I think it's more important they have a toy to play with than I have something to restore. <laughs> So it was about a week or so later that people said that they were going to take it to the tip if nobody wanted it. And I thought, oh, go on then, I'll take it for parts. And I thought initially I would just take the staircase out and perhaps use the wood because wood's always useful for projects and that sort of thing. But then when I got it home, I thought, well, oh, actually, it's quite nice. It was very poorly painted. It was painted all in this one blue colour, but someone had obviously tried to texture it and it's got lumps in the paint. <laughs> So it took a lot of sanding and a lot of repainting and a lot of filling because it had been well worn. But I've got it to a stage now that you can see here. I have done another video on Sunnyview Villa, so I won't go on too much about uh, what I said in my previous video about uh, the, how I restored it and got it to this stage. Now I've called it Sunnyview Villa rather than my third doll's house, because that's not very original, is it? <laughs> because it's got windows all the way around the house. So all four sides. As windows so you can see the front's got those windows the sides which I'll show you later in more detail I've got those windows and the back is a similar design to oops and that's got uh, windows too but it's also got like a patio door and a back door as well so I thought sunny view villa was a nice name for something that if it was a sunny day you'd see the sun from all angles in the house now initially the front and the back slotted in there was like some rails here that they would slot into. I removed the rails because I thought it's not really an ideal way for the front and back to attach when it, it's a display doll's house rather than the one to be played with. So I'm going to hinge the front and the back on instead so I can easily get inside the house. Now I have actually put all the furniture in the house and I've done this before. So if you've watched my previous videos, some of this will be a little bit familiar. But I've actually swapped couple of the rooms over. Initially, I had that as the dining room and this as the lounge. But to be honest, it didn't really work as a lounge. It was too narrow with the staircase there. And I was going to use a large dining room table. And by the time you have a table like this and the chairs around it, it takes up an awful lot of space. So I thought, well, maybe I won't use this table, even though it's a nice table. I thought I'll put it to one side and perhaps use it on another project. I thought perhaps I'll do a kitchen diner instead. So here I've just got the kitchen at the back, which I'll show you later with the camera. I'll bring the camera through so you can see it. And I've got a table here, so it's more like a kitchen diner. So I thought that worked rather nicely. We've got a little high chair there as well for the baby that you'll see upstairs in the cot. Now this table is quite wonderful, really. It's my, oh, I nearly dropped it. <laughs> It's got these wonderful legs on it and it's expandable so you can put the flaps down if you prefer or you can pull the flaps up and underneath there's these two little wooden pulley out things <laughs> that you pull out to keep the, the flaps up and there's four adorable tiny <laughs> little hinges i mean aren't they wonderful the way these things are made is truly exquisite it really is so that goes rather nicely in there and we've got a couple of chairs that matches quite nicely so I thought they went quite well together and we've also got what I was referring to as a dresser but I have been told is a hutch now on my previous videos when I was unboxing I was referring to this as a dresser and someone in the comments or what did even be a couple of people actually said it's a hutch now I'd never heard of a hutch before <laughs> other than what you keep a rabbit and a guinea pig in and I thought, oh, maybe it's a term we don't use in the UK. Oh, no, we do use the term hutch in the UK. I have just never heard of it before. And apparently, I think, if I'm right in saying, because I had a few that looked quite similar to this, I think this is what people were saying was a hutch. And I've put a little tea set that I had as well. And now I tended to buy a lot of my furniture from eBay job lot auctions. 
and this neural crockery set would have come as part of a, a job lot auction as would have the hatch and the table and chairs and most of what you see in this house at the moment. So I thought that looked rather cute. I've sort of stuck those on. I just use blue tack to stick things on, well white tack. And then I can move it around if I want to, but it also means it's not constantly falling about <laughs> while I play with the designs and what have you. And I'm just gonna have to move the house a little bit because I'm struggling to see from this angle. It's a big old heavy house. <laughs> So the bathroom, I changed the bathroom around a little bit. Initially I had the shower there and the bath over here, I think. But I thought it probably worked a little bit better this way. And I've got this lovely blue sparkly floor that I picked up from Hobbycraft. So I should put that in the bathroom. I haven't cut it to size yet, hence why all the carpet and everything is just hanging over the front. It's just to give an idea as to what it might look like if I decided to use that flooring. Now I've got this rail here which works out quite nice, like a screen. So it stops people from walking up the stairs and seeing straight in the bathroom. Cause that's a bit weird, isn't it? <laughs> well, I haven't said that. My childhood doll's house, every time people walked up the stairs, they had to go through the bathroom to the bedroom. <laughs> so we eventually put a hallway in and put a wall in. So it made it a bit more private for people. <laughs> so I thought that screen, oh, sorry, I've actually knocked the shower unit over. I thought that screen, Worked quite well in the bathroom to give people a little bit of privacy, but we're going to need something here as well, um, because otherwise people coming up the stairs will be able to see into the bathroom. And we've got the bedroom on the other side, and we've got the bedroom and the baby's cot. And again, I think that works quite well. I think I swapped it over. I think initially I had the bed at the back here, but when I was playing with it the other night, I thought actually that works quite nice. You've got the bed and uh, the dressing table. Again, don't worry, the carpets don't fit. They're just placed in roughly for now. Now, at the moment, you can see we've just got the two floors. I am going to put a third floor up here that's going to be an attic room. And I've got, I acquired some stairs. Again, someone was giving them away free. I should use these stairs as stairs to go up to the attic room, which is quite handy. They're just Asda stairs. It must have been from an Asda doll's house that somebody had. Uh, I must admit, I am struggling to visualise what it's going to look like with the attic room on. I think we'll have to get a piece of wood and to the right size and attach it so I can have a play with that because I am struggling to visualise that a little bit. It's going to be a bit of a strange room because you've got these bars across and we need those bars for structure because it keeps the two sides on the house because otherwise there's nothing to support those. And then, of course, because it's... An attic room and it's got the sort of v-shape there's not that much usable space in the attic but that's quite common for attic rooms isn't it they often have the sides to them and i thought i might use that as like a children's playroom so it doesn't really matter it's not too much room up there as long as we can get a couple of beds in there and some tables and maybe a toy chest and what have you i thought it might look quite nice in the attic room that's also where i'm going to put the electrics for the house we'll build a box in the attic room that will look a little bit like a, a toy box or something and that's where all the electrics for the house will go now one of the reasons why i'm putting all the furniture into the house is so that i can get a feel for where i'm going to need to put the electrics because i really need to start wiring in the electrics before i put any of the flooring in so you know the wiring for the downstairs lighting here will go underneath the floor for the bathroom and the bedroom what have you um the ceiling lights here will go into the attic so we'll need to get the floor down for the attic before i can start thinking about the ceiling lights for the upstairs level but i can think about having a ceiling light i think i should need one here in the dining room and one in the kitchen and again one in the lounge and one in the study so that's four downstairs alone and then probably another four for the upstairs level as well and then maybe one or two for the attic so it's going to need quite a lot of ceiling lights now, what I've done with my previous um, projects is I've actually bought lights to go in the house. But if anyone's watched my previous videos, they'll also see that I take all the wiring out of the lights and put my own LED lighting into them. So it seems a little bit daft to be buying all these lovely lights and then stripping all the wires out to them. So I thought for this project, what I might do is try and make my own lights. I've got quite a lot of lovely beads, so I thought perhaps I might play with trying to get an LED light into one of those beads to make it look like a, a lampshade, or actually just make some lampshades myself to put in the house. I do have one lamp that can be used in the house, this one here, and this is left over from a previous project, and it's just got the shade 
and it's got a bead that stands over the pole and then the hole in the pole goes through to the base. So, well, my LED light will go into here and the wires will go down the pole and into the base there. And so that's just a bead over it, which works quite nice, doesn't it? It's quite effective. So that's the only light I've got for this house. So the rest of it, I shall have a go at making. Now, as you can see, this lounge here on this side. So I moved it from this side. I thought it worked better over here. And I bought this suite of furniture, especially for this house. I think it's quite a nice suite of furniture. And at the back, we've got an office. So I've got a desk, a chair and a bookcase. So that works quite well. And say so at the back of the house, you've got the back level that goes on and you've got a door that comes out from the kitchen. You've also got a double door, like a patio door that comes out through the study. So I thought that worked quite nice. You would have patio doors from the study, wouldn't you? And one of the things I'm not sure about, though, <laughs> is how big some of the items are in the lounge. Now, we've got the grandfather clock and the display cabinet. Now, to me, they look incredibly tall. <laughs> now, I'm pretty sure this is a 112 scale house. And these were bought as 112 scale items. However, is it just me or are they incredibly tall for 112 scales? I mean, they virtually reach the ceiling. They really do. And what I'll do is I will get the camera a little bit closer so you can have a look. I'd really appreciate everyone's comments as to whether or not they think they need to be reduced in height. Because part of me wants to reduce this clock in height and maybe just chop this whole section here out <laughs> and just move the base up to here. And the other part of me wants to chop these legs off or something and have this sat on the floor because I just think they're too tall. But that might just be me. Maybe I've never seen a grandfather clock and I don't know how tall they are. <laughs> so I'd appreciate your comments on that. Same with the fireplace. I do like to wire up my fires so they get uh, flickering lights and they look like they're fires that are on. Now, I acquired this fire from an auction, again, an eBay auction. Um, I didn't know what size it was going to be. The man didn't know what scale it was when he sold it. And it's rather large. So I'm not sure if that's workable in the lounge. I'm not sure oops, if it's a little bit too large. So you've got the settees and the chairs. So do we think the fireplace is too large for the lounge? Or can I use it and just have like an oversized fireplace? I mean, I know a lot of stately homes have massive fireplaces, but this isn't quite a stately home. <laughs> so I'm not sure. Again, what I'll do is I will get the camera into the house so you can have a better look because it's not very easy from a distance and appreciate your feedback on that. I'll also get the camera and show you the kitchen as well because it's very difficult to see the kitchen all the way through the house. And I'll go around the back of the house and show you the kitchen and show you how that's going to work. But with the kitchen as well, I say I like doing my LED lighting. So I've got a cooker here. This is a different style cooker than one I've used before. So what I thought I'd do on this cooker is I'm either going to put the LED lighting in here, but I'll have to sort of darken down the glass, otherwise it would just look like three lights in there and a bit strange. I would like the lights to come up through the hob as well, but this is just wood underneath the hob. So I think I'll drill through the wood but the grill doesn't open on this particular design. It's sealed shut. So what I'll do is I will drill through the back here into the grill and then put the lighting in the grill section so it shines up through the hob. I might then also drill down and see if that's enough light for the oven or see whether or not I need LED lighting in the oven as well as in the grill. So I'll have a play with that and see how that works. But I say that's a different style cooker than the ones I've used before. And I've got a fridge as well. Now, what I did with the line at Lodge is I actually put a light in the fridge, which worked rather nicely. And I've got uh, the granny opening the fridge door and the light comes out and makes it look quite atmospheric. <laughs> she was quite pleased with how that turned out. I might do a similar thing with this. This is a fridge freezer. I think it's a Sylvanian family uh, style fridge freezer. But again, what I'll probably do is put LED light maybe in the fridge section. I think that's supposed to be the freezer section up there. And it's quite a cute little fridge because it already comes with some bits and pieces. So we've got some milk. Um, I think that's oh yogurt that's rather excitable running around. 
<laughs> these tubs here are ice cream. And then we've also got oh, some food in the bottom there as well. We've got what we've got broccoli, pepper, ah, tomato sauce, <laughs> important stuff, <laughs> carrot, and some bananas. So they are rather cute, aren't they? <laughs> so I say the food came with all of those, so I thought they were rather nice. So that's sort of my plans for the house. So I've got a lot to do. I'm only really just picking it up again. I haven't worked on it all the time. I've been working on Lyle at Lodge. So I think the first thing I'll do is I'll start looking at the wiring and say I need to get the wiring in before I can do the floors. And that would be my first job. And then I can look at decorating. I need to decide what colour I'm going to do the walls. Now I did have a think about wallpaper in the walls. And I have some lovely wallpaper um, sort of here. I thought it looked rather nice. And I thought it worked quite well in the house. But the trouble is, this doll's house is handmade completely. Someone's obviously made it for their children or relatives. And nothing on it is quite square or straight. <laughs> so it's really nicely made. And someone's put a lot of love and effort into it. But nothing is straight. So I thought if I wallpapered it, I think it's going to end up being quite problematic. <laughs> and it could end up looking a little bit, almost like it's centrate the fact that nothing's quite straight on it. So I think I'd be better off just painting the insides and then using decorations on the insides. I do have some borders that I acquired, or I could print off some different patterns if I liked. I thought I might put a border around the room. That might not work too badly. But again, I've got lots of windows, so it's going to be a lot of stopping, starting, <laughs> stopping, starting. But I need to decorate first before I can decide what I'm going to do with regards to that. So say so what I'm going to do is I should get the camera and we'll have a closer look at the lounge while I put the furniture back in it. And you can see whether or not you think the clock and the display cabinet's too tall and the fireplace too. And then we'll have a closer look at the back of the house. You can have a look at the kitchen and how that's going to work. And uh, the little office too. I think the office is quite nice though. So I'll grab the camera and we'll go around and have a closer look inside the house and at the back. Right, so I've just grabbed the camera so we can have a close look inside the house. So this is the kitchen diner. Here we've got that little table we were looking at earlier. And the hutch dresser over there. And the kitchen at the back, but we'll go and have a closer look at the kitchen from the other side. We'll move up to the bathroom. So we've got the bathroom here and that's the back of the shower unit. Doesn't look overly attractive from the back, does it? So I'll just move that out of the way. It's sort of blocking the view a little bit. We've got the screen. I showed you a little stop. People walking up the stairs, being able to see in the bathroom. And the stairs there will lead up to the attic room. I'll just put a rocking chair and a sewing table underneath the chairs to add detail. Go across to the bedroom. And we've got the bed, a little box, dressing table, etc. And then we go through, and we've got the baby in his cot, then the box of baby. It's quite funny, he's got really, really thick hands. I'll show you him. when we go around the other side, I'll show you him. He's so funny. I think the bedroom works quite nicely. And then we go down to the lounge so you can have a better look at how big these items are, and whether or not you think they would work. So that's pretty much on a level with the floor, I guess, the camera. So you can see the clock almost reaches the ceiling, as does the display cabinet too. So, so now I just feel as though they're a bit tall for the room. So appreciate what everyone else thinks. And the fire as well. I might get away with the fireplace, even though it is a bit on the big side. But I'm not sure about the clock. And the display cabinet, whether or not. They need to be made a bit smaller. We've got a little table there, that's quite cute with the lamp on it. So I think that works okay. Okay, and here's the back of the house. The lighting's not ideal at the back of the house, but so here's our little baby in his cot. So he's quite funny. Look at the arms on him. <laughs> he looks like a little boxer, doesn't he? Such thick arms. So, uh, yeah, he's quite funny, he makes me laugh. <laughs> and then we've got the little office at the back of the lounge here. Yeah, I think that works quite nicely, I have to be honest. Little office desk. 
and chair and a bookcase that works quite nice and then we come across the kitchen again i don't think that's too bad is you've got the cooker a little corner unit and a sink so it's a little bit dark in here and also quite pleased with the fact that the fridge fits quite nicely underneath the stairs so that's the staircase there i will need to paint it because it's just wood in there at the moment and i'll just put the back door on it so you can see what it's going to look like so we'll have this wide sort of patio doors here coming out from the office and that's quite nice leading through from the lounge and then we've got a door here leading through from the kitchen so it's quite common to have like a back door in the kitchen isn't it so that works out okay it's a little bit of a shame that the units are taller than the window but i think we'll just have to live with that one well as you can see i've got a lot to do on sunnyview villa it's going to be a long project it's a big house well it's quite quirky because it's handmade it doesn't fit any of the sort of traditional ideas because normally you would have like a back wall to the house and then you can put everything against that back wall whereas here we've got the whole 360 degree view into the house and i quite like that but it is going to have its challenges but the first thing i think i'm going to do is i'm going to work out where my lighting is going to go because some of the lighting wire will need to go underneath the carpet especially upstairs but i might also want to put some of the wiring downstairs underneath the flooring as well to keep it nice and tidy. So I'm going to work that out first. I'm going to have a look for my bead stash as well and see if I've got any beads that might work as ceiling lights for the downstairs floor and see whether or not they're big enough beads that I could perhaps get an LED light into them and change the bead into a lighting for the ceiling. Otherwise I'll need to make some lamp shades or light shades. I'll also have a look and see if I've got anything that I can make other lamps out of as well. I think it's quite nice to have lamps around a room because it adds a bit of atmosphere to the room, doesn't it? Again, I'll also look at the cooker and the fridge and see whether I'll get lightings into that. And the fireplace too, assuming I decide to keep that fireplace because I say it's a bit big. <laughs> so I'll have a think. Be interested to know what you think anyhow. Well, I hope you've enjoyed looking around Sunnyview Villa with me and joining me on the process while I work out what I'm going to do next with it. If you've got any comments or suggestions or any information as to whether or not you think my furniture is too big or too small, please pop them below. I really do appreciate everyone's comments and suggestions. And I learned something new. So I had no idea what a hutch was. So there you go. I learned something new every day. So thank you for that. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you can see how I get on with Sunnyview Villa. And thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time. Bye bye.